Good afternoon. I'm Mrs. Meeta Farke and I'll be teaching Chapter 5, Syllogism. We have already studied the meaning of syllogism in the previous chapter. Syllogism is a deductive argument in which the conclusion is deduced from only two propositions. We have already studied the three types of syllogisms, namely disjunctive syllogism, hypothetical syllogism, and categorical syllogism. In this chapter, we will be studying categorical syllogism in much detail. It is a deductive argument that is mediate inference consisting of three categorical propositions that together contain exactly three terms, each of which occurs in only two of the constituent propositions. Now we will recollect the types of categorical propositions. We know that there are four types of categorical propositions, namely A, E, I and O. A is universal affirmative general proposition in which the class of subject term is wholly included in the class of predicate term. E universal negative general proposition in which the class of subject term is wholly excluded from the class of predicate term. I, particular affirmative general proposition in which the class of subject term is partially included in the class of predicate term. O, particular negative general proposition in which the class of subject term is partially excluded from the class of predicate term. Now let us take example of categorical syllogism. A categorical syllogism consists of only categorical propositions. All fruits are ripe. All apples are fruits. Therefore, all apples are ripe. In all these three propositions, the word all is used and therefore they are all universal affirmative A propositions. Now let us see much in detail. The first proposition, all fruits are ripe in this. The class of fruits is the subject term and the class of ripe is the predicate term where the class of fruits is wholly included in the class of ripe things. In the second proposition, class of apples is the subject term and the class of fruits is the predicate term. The class of apples is wholly included in the class of fruits. Therefore, all apples are ripe is the conclusion in which, in which the class of apples is the subject term and the class of ripe things is the predicate term where the class of apples is wholly included in the class, class of ripe things. Now we will understand the terms in categorical syllogism. The first is the measured term. It is represented by capital P which is the predicate of the conclusion. Then we have minor term which is represented by capital S and it is the subject of the conclusion. Then we have middle term which is represented by capital M and it is that term 
which occurs only in both the premises but does not occur in the conclusion. Now let us take an example to understand terms in categorical syllogism. All mangoes are ripe. Some mangoes are fruits. Therefore, some fruits are ripe. Here the word ripe is the predicate of the conclusion. Therefore, it is called as major term. Then fruits is the subject of the conclusion and so it is called as minor term. Then the word mangoes, it lies in both the premises but does not lie in the conclusion. So it is called as middle term and it is represented by M. Now let us understand the propositions of categorical syllogism. First is the major premise. Major premise is one in which the predicate that is the major term occurs. Then we have minor premise. Minor premise is one in which the subject that is minor term occurs. And then we have conclusion that is the proposition which is deduced from these two premises. Now let us take an example to understand the different premises in a categorical syllogism. All bottles are transparent. No bottles are large objects. Therefore, no large objects are transparent. Here, the word transparent is the predicate of the conclusion. It lies in the first premise. So, the first premise is called the major premise. It is the major term. So, it is the major premise. Then, large objects is the subject of the conclusion. It is called the minor term and it lies in the second premise. So the second premise is called a minor premise and the last proposition that is no, therefore no large objects are transparent is the conclusion. Now we will understand the validity of categorical syllogism but before we could understand the validity we must understand the logical form of categorical syllogism. Categorical syllogism, when reduced to the logical form, we have first as the major premise, second as the minor premise, and third the conclusion. But the validity of categorical syllogism does not depend upon the logical form of categorical syllogism. It depends upon the relation between the premises and the conclusion and categorical syllogism is valid when the premises imply the conclusion and a categorical syllogism is said to be invalid when the premises do not imply the conclusion. Now we will understand the figures of categorical syllogism. Depending upon the position of the middle term in an argument, Aristotle has given three figures of categorical syllogism and it was Galen who has added the fourth figure to categorical syllogism. Now let us understand the figures of categorical syllogism. Figure 1 can see that it represents S where the middle term stands as the subject of the major premise and the predicate of the minor premise. 
Let us take an example. All poisonous things are harmful. Some gases are poisonous things. Therefore, some gases are harmful. Here, in this argument, poisonous things is the middle term which stands as the, sub, as the subject of the measure premise and the predicate of the minor premise. Now we come to figure 2. It represents horseshoe. See the figure. Here, the middle term stands as the predicate of both the premises, the major premise and the minor premise. Let us take an example. All tigers are wild animals. All cats are not wild animals. Here, wild animals is the middle term. It stands as the predicate in both the premises, that is the major premise and the minor premise. Now we come to figure 3. It represents C, where the middle term stands as the subject of both the premises, that is the major premise and the minor premise. Let us take an example. All teachers are trained. All teachers are qualified. Therefore, all qualified persons are trained. Your teachers is the middle term. It stands as the subject of both the premises, that is, the major premise and the minor premise. Now we come to the figure 4. It represents Z, where the middle term stands as the predicate of the major premise and the subject of the minor premise. All triangles are plane figures. No plane figures are hexagons. Therefore, no hexagons are triangles. Here, plane figures is the middle term which stands as the predicate in the major premise and the subject in the minor premise. In this session, we have studied categorical syllogism then the terms, different terms used in categorical syllogism, that is the major term, the minor term and the middle term. We have also studied the premises, their names, that is the major premise, the minor premise and the figures of categorical syllogism. Thank you.